What's going on everybody? So in this video, we're going to be looking at how to set up local JDK Java docs inside of an IDE, in my case, IntelliJ. So as a little bit of a backstory, I've actually recently been working with Java a little bit more just to, just to kind of figure out what does more modern Java look like. It's been six, five years since I've done any Java professionally. So I've been looking into you know, what Spring currently looks like, what some of the more modern Java approaches look like, and it's been super, super cool. Now, one of the things that I got and got stuck on right out of the gate was how to get my Java docs available in my IDE, which might seem pretty simple. So as an example, here you can see I've got a string that I'm declaring, and string is obviously a class from the standard library. So I can go in with IntelliJ and I can hit the quick documentation shortcut and it'll give me some information about this particular class, which is, which is great. And this oftentimes will, will work really well for, for most cases. However, oftentimes I like to pull up the Java docs, the kind of web-based UI where you can navigate around and read the documentation and so on. Now, what I learned with IntelliJ is that you have the ability to do quick documentation, which is what you just saw, and then pull up external documentation. In fact, how you can see this is if we go to settings and pull open, let me bring this window down a little bit, and we pull open the key map, and under key map, just search for documentation, you'll notice there's a quick documentation here, and then also an external documentation. So this was good, but what I found is when I go in and actually look up, looks like my windows are messed up here. Let's see if I can bring this down at all. There we go, okay, cool. So what I kept finding was if I would type in quick documentation, that would show up as an option, but external documentation would not. And when I would hit that keyboard shortcut that was set, nothing would occur. So. In IntelliJ, what I found out is if you go into file project structure, you'll see under the SDKs, there's actually a location for you to set up documentation paths. Now, most places in the internet would say, okay, documentation paths, just go there. You can click this specify URL and you can actually link to external documentation, or in this case, your external Java docs. So I pre-populated this earlier, but you can see here that Oracle has kind of a consistent URL that you can use. If, if I copy this URL, head over to a web browser and go to it, it'll bring up the, the Java docs for, for this version of Java, which is, which is exactly what we usually need. And we can change the version here to things like 11. There are some versions that don't seem to work right out of the gate, which kind of sucks. I guess they decided to not have consistent URLs for these. So like Java 8 has a slightly different URL. You'd have to go find that. But nonetheless, for the most part, it's pretty simple. And you can hit OK here and apply the setting. And now you've actually got the external Java doc I was talking about set up. So we can go into here. And this time, if we type in external documentation, you'll see it shows up as an option. So if I hit that or hit the keyboard shortcut, um, it'll pop open in a web browser, which is perfect and I can navigate around. Now the one issue that I personally have with this is I actually don't like my documentation to be reliant on like an external website. Um, you know, if you're flying in a plane or if you're doing something with not great internet connection, it's kind of a bummer when you can't access the documentation. So I wanted to find a way to bring these docs locally. Now, you may have noticed if we go back to file project structure, I selected this specify URL, but there's also this plus sign for add, which is effectively saying if you've got the documentation locally, you can just add it right here. So that's actually what I'd like to do. Now, when I saw this, I thought, okay, this, this should be pretty straightforward, pretty simple but it actually turned out to be a bit of a pain and not because of anything other than the fact that Oracle's website is really challenging to navigate. And if you've ever tried to download Java from Oracle, you know how, how rough this can be. So I wanted to kind of show you how to quickly get to this. If you just type in Java download JDK, one of the first pages that should show up from the Oracle website is a whole area of Java downloads. Now, 
I spent quite some time trying to like traverse the site and figure out where it would be. Like I would click on Java 13.0, I would look for a documentation download, wouldn't find anything. I'd click the documentation tab, wouldn't have anything. Said they decided to just put like licensing information here. Uh, so we couldn't really find what I needed. Now, eventually, if you go back to this page, I, I found out that where they keep the links for the JDK docs, if you scroll to the bottom here, there is an area called additional resources, right? And additional resources actually has all of these different JDK versions. So 8, 11, 13. And this is exactly what we need. Now, if you're using an in-between version, I, I don't really know what to tell you. I found some links online that had some references to the Oracle site that had kind of the the uh, different versions that are that are maybe missing here. Um, it seems like what Oracle's doing is if we open up, Wikipedia has a really good reference to this. If we open up Java versions Wikipedia, they have a table in here that's pretty solid that demonstrates the versions of Java. So you can see Java 8's under long-term support, LTS. Java 11's under long-term support, and then 13 is like the most current version of Java. So they keep those three versions referenced here for doc downloads. Now, why they don't keep the other ones for historical reference, I have no idea. Um, but for my case, luckily, I'm using Java 13. So all we gotta do here is click download, go to accept the license agreement and download that zip. So once you've pulled this zip in, we can go back to IntelliJ and what we've basically got to do here is find a location to uncompress or unzip that, that documentation site. So I'll just pull up a terminal window here and kind of show you how I usually, usually do this. Okay, I think this may be a little bit bigger. All right, there we go. So effectively, my Java is located in user lib JVM. And particularly, I've got it set to this location here, Java 13 JDK. Now, depending on your operating system, depending on how you've installed Java, this location might vary. So in my case, I use Arch Linux. So I use the Arch user repository to install Java on my system. And it puts it in this location. So just know there might be some variance for you here. Now, what I do with this docs directory is I actually just plug it directly into this JDK folder, which might not be a best practice per se, but I want to make sure that I can pretty easily, um, pretty easily kind of load that up. And it looks like I'm getting some weird artifacts here. Let me, let me kill something on here. Uh, I think this is oftentimes what it is. There we go. Okay. Um, Compton's a screen compositor. It's, it's causing issues with OBS. Anyways, so again, I've got my JVM in this location. So what I'll do here, since it's in that location, I'll have to do this as sudo. But if I just sudo unzip downloads JDK doc all zip, and then if I set the destination flag to be that location, so that'll be user lib JVM Java 13, it is going to uncompress and put the root docs folder in this location for me. So I'll hit enter. Now in my machine, I've already got this loaded. So I'll say A for all, which will basically do the same thing. It will replace all the files that pre-exist. And now it's gonna bring all those into my machine. So all is well. If we look into that directory now, so that's again, user lib JVM Java 13. You'll notice along with the standard Java directories that you'd expect in Java Home, there's also a docs directory there now too. And then inside of docs, you have the index page for the Java docs and then all the API documentation inside of here. So effectively, you've got the website available to you locally for this JDK. So this is nice because now at least I know that this is here and even if I'm not an IntelliJ, I can easily access the Java docs. So I'll exit out of here. We'll go back to our plus sign on the right and this is going to open up a window that will show us the location of our Java, which is great. So JVM Java 13, I'll open that up and inside of the docs directory, all I've got to do actually is just select the docs directory. And this will tell IntelliJ, hey, you can find the Java docs for this SDK at this location. So we'll apply, we'll hit okay. And now if I go in and kind of do the same thing, so let's, let's go back to our browser and just make sure that this isn't open anymore. Here, I'll get rid of this just so it doesn't cause any confusion. And we'll go to string again, and we'll hit the external documentation short key. Again, shift F1 by default. 
I'll come back to my browser and I'm back at the Java doc. But the big difference here, as you can tell, is I'm pulling this off of my local file system. So that accomplishes the goal of having all of these bits be local for me. Um, so it's cool, I can still navigate around, it stays local the whole time. Um, there might be some references to like external websites and things, so it might still bring you externally, but for the most part it should stay locally and self-contained like this, which is great. So overall that gets you into a, a local mode with your Java doc. One extra tip I'll leave you with, uh, in case you're just getting into this stuff, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but in my case, I'm using Maven as the build tool. This is a Spring Boot application that I'm playing with. In fact, right now I'm checking out this book, Spring in Action. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the description uh, by Craig Walls. It's, it's really good. It's, it's been kind of cool to, to check out Spring 5 and what the new features are and things like that. Again, it's been, it's been years, but... Um, this, this uh, project that he uses uh, all typically use Maven, which is a really common uh, build tool, dependency manager, does, does a lot of stuff. So in IntelliJ, you might want to actually see the Java docs for the libraries you brought in. Like for example, get mapping, which is, I'm, I've got a controller here that's basically saying, you know, hey, on this particular path design, I want the get request to that URI to call this method or this uh, function, right? I guess in this case, it's part of a class, so it'd be a, it'd be a method. So um, in this particular instance, I wanna pull up the Java docs and maybe they're not available to me out of the gate. So one nice thing is you can go to the Maven tab inside of IntelliJ, click the download button, and you can choose download sources and documentation. And download sources and documentation is, is cool because one, you, you could just do docs, that'll give you the, the Java doc stuff. But sources, if the source is available, will give you the source code. So when you step into the code for the libraries you're using, it'll actually take you to those locations without having to decompile the bytecode, which oftentimes can produce weird results because it's trying to take its best guess based on the bytecode, what Java code represented that. So we do download sources and docs. I've already done it, so this should be quick, nearly instant. And now if we go to something like get mapping, we can hit the same key. So I'll hit the external documentation short key, I just did. It's opened up a browser window here. And what's cool about how IntelliJ sets this up is it actually runs like a little local web server for me. And inside of here, I've basically got the spring documentation. So I've got get mapping, I can navigate around, and if I go to overview, I can actually see the entire Spring Web documentation uh, for 5.0.8, which is what I happen to be using. So you kind of got these two pieces. You've got, the, you've got the local SDK library, which is available to you. It doesn't run on a web server, it just pulls up the docs locally. And then you've actually got this little web server that IntelliJ runs where you can see the Java docs without actually having to go to you know, Spring's website or the Java doc website and, and find the Spring details. So overall, pretty cool. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can kind of set up documentation well with Java. Um, most of my videos and content is around kind of like systems engineering stuff, Kubernetes, containers, so on. But I'm starting to play with Java a little bit more. If you're interested in some videos on that, let me know. Um, I'm thinking about doing kind of a mix of things too, like maybe how to build best practice minimal container images for Java applications and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Overall, excited to play more with Java. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I will see you next time. Thanks.